Hey, my good friend, Sam Haymart with Test Driven TV. Here today for your viewing pleasure, we have the 2022 Ford Bronco Raptor, the crazy off-road version. So we're gonna take it off-roading today and I'm gonna show it to you inside and out. And then I'm gonna tell you what I really think. All right, my friends, before we get out on the test drive, I'm gonna talk about a little bit about what we've got right here. And I'm not gonna make it too long because chances are, if you're watching this video, you already know this thing's inside and out. Maybe you're waiting for one that you've already ordered and you just need something to keep you excited. This is the Bronco Raptor. Now Raptor from Ford Performance means it is the ultimate, ultimate when it comes to speed, off-road capability, and all of the visuals and the equipment and everything that comes with that. And in the case of this one, we do not have all the options that you can get here, but as tested, we're at $75,000-ish. This thing looks like a fantasy that some kid drew in math class in fourth grade. Now I'm not banging on it. I mean that in a good way. This has got big fat fender flares, big fat wide tires, a unique hood, unique fenders. This thing is nearly 10 inches wider than the standard Bronco. And that is by way of these giant fender flares and these big wider tires and wheels. And the track is wider to get these big giant wheels and tires under the fenders. These are 17 inch alloy wheels and 37 inch tires. Look at that, those are massive. And the ride height is raised quite a bit. And you can see the suspension here is very unique. Fox shocks, 3.1 inch diameter. And these are adjustable, of course. They can be stiff, they can be soft, they can go along the way depending on your drive modes, and a robust suspension front and rear. Looking underneath, you can see this thing's got a full battery of skid plates. Ah, it's just amazing how much taller and wider this thing is, and you feel it when you drive it, believe me. Looking at the front, you can see it's got a unique bumper, rigid fog lamps down there. It has a unique grille and it's got LED signature lighting, very nice, and it's got the LED marker lighting that we first saw in the Raptor trucks back in the day. The hood is unique, of course, and then it has the big black insert on the top that's supposed to give you an indication of the twin turbo V6 under the hood with its 418 horsepower. Coming down the side, this has standard rock rails on it with detachable running boards. I like that, that you can take those darn things off because running boards are not really the best thing to have when you're truly off-roading. You're gonna tear those things off. And in this case, you can take them off and then you still have your rock rails. Bonus, and getting around to the back, you can see a big giant full-size spare. Oh my God, that thing's still huge. I will point out, you can see that big third brake light up on top of it and you can not only see it from the vantage point you're looking at it from, but when you're sitting behind the wheel looking into the rearview mirror, you can see it too. That's all you can see. I don't know why there's even a rearview mirror in this thing. It totally blocks the view. The chassis and the frame and all of this is completely unique to this model. And at the end of the video, we have linked a special video that does a full deep dive into the mechanicals of the chassis, if you're so inclined. Okay, my friends, now it's time to take a drive. If you're wondering, don't you usually start with the interior and talk to us about the interior? That'll be at the end of the video. I wanted to get to the good stuff right away. So if you are wondering where we are, we are at the Bulldog Off-Road Vehicle Park just outside of Phoenix, Arizona. And we are in a pretty challenging area for some. If you're an experienced off-roader, this is not actually very challenging. I've got this in off-road mode with four high. The rear differential is locked. This has both a front and rear locking differential if you need it. And so this area out here has a lot of rock crawling. It's got a lot of sand dunes. It's got a lot of moguls and mostly washes that we're driving through. And really one of the very first things that I noticed when I started driving this was how maneuverable it is because this has some really tight steering. This has a pretty tight turning circle in spite of how big this thing is. Now this particular trail that we're on has a lot of deep sand, so I'm really concentrating on making sure that I don't get us stuck. In fact, I'm gonna roll the window down here so I can hear in case I've got somebody else coming around a corner at me. And you can hear a little bit better what's going on. So we've got some nice banked moguls. <laughs> The steering wheel on this, I love this big, thick steering wheel. And this thing's got such good articulation. 
We've got Dana 44 front, Dana 50 rear axle. The suspension travel on this is absolutely amazing. 13 inches front suspension travel, 14 inches rear suspension travel. Do you know how much of that is? That is what a lot of people spend big money modifying their vehicles to get. Nothing you can throw at this thing makes you feel like, oh, I'm not sure I should be doing that. Now, if you are rock crawling, this has a 67.7 to one crawl ratio when you put it down in four wheel drive low. Get over this hill here. It does have hill descent control and it of course has trail control. I hope I called it by its correct name. That is to say that you can set this to a certain speed and it will maneuver the throttle and it will maneuver, hold on, I gotta see over this. It'll maneuver the throttle and the brakes such that all you have to do is steer. So if you're in a challenging situation and you're not comfortable handling the throttle, the brakes and all that with tricky situations in the way of traction, you can set that It'll go to a certain speed of two, three, four, five miles an hour, whatever you're comfortable with. And then all you have to do is worry about your line through this. And this is an area that's actually pretty important to keep my line right. So forgive me for not staring at the camera the whole time. The steering has a nice weighting to it. Now you can adjust this. There's a button here on the steering wheel. You can adjust the steering feel depending on whether you like it light or heavy. It's got a nice quick ratio. And with the exhaust system, you can adjust the sound. I happen to have it on Baja right now, so you can hear it, maybe. Now this engine has a pretty good level of torque, even though it is a highly strung, pretty small displacement twin turbo engine. The way this is geared with a 4.7 rear and front axle, and the way the throttle mapping is tuned, especially in off-road mode, this has a nice tip in on the throttle so that when you are trying to manipulate and maneuver over objects and around corners and moguls and whatnot, uh, it's pretty easy to deal with. You don't have a power curve that's fighting with you, so to speak. Now we've got a challenging spot here. Need to pick a good line through this. There, got it. And this has the 360 degree camera system that really makes it easy when you get into tight spaces, if you're trying to turn around or just go over a, up and over, you really can't see what's on the other side. Let me get her over here. Oh, <laughs> Woo! Oh, this is so maneuverable. I'm gonna pick a good line through here. Woo! One other great feature this has is a disconnecting front sway bar. So if you are rock crawling, and you are in a place with a lot of moguls and articulation that's necessary, disconnecting that front sway bar, it's electronic, can enable you to more easily traverse some of these spots. Now, this is pretty challenging here. I might have done well by myself to disconnect that, but I just didn't find it necessary for where we're at today. But it is a nice tool to have in your toolbox. One of the reasons the Fox shocks are such a big deal is because they are some of the best off-road shocks in the business. That's why when you see Jeep Wranglers and other off-road vehicles that are highly modified and people have spent a lot of aftermarket money on their vehicle, you usually see Fox shocks underneath them. And so these are, of course, adjustable dampers, which means not only are they really good at handling the rigor of off-road driving and high-speed off-road driving, which we're not doing today, uh, they can really adjust to give you the kind of ride you want to have which is compliant out here in a place like this doing this yet when you get on the pavement you want those things to be a little bit more adept to giving you the kind of control and stability you want at speed on the highway so as much fun as all of this has been out here today it's it's finally time to get on the pavement and talk about what this is like to live with every day after we go through one more tight little spot here wow Ooh, that's that's rock right there, by the way. Hi. Uh, I got it. Rocks on both sides right here. Woo. <laughs> yeah. Time to take a drive on the pavement and talk about how this rides and drives on the highway as well as what this motor is like. Now, in spite of the fact that this does have a very 
well done suspension and chassis for off-roading I'm just going to be a spoiler right now and tell you that on the highway this is very impressive and a lot of that goes to the fact that this does have these adjustable dampers that can give you the best of both worlds they're not just tuned for off-roading they can be tuned for on the pavement so out here on a highway with a little bit of a wind it's got a nice stability it does have that off-road cushiness and sort of that marshmallowiness which i happen to like in a vehicle like this but the steering feel is actually very sharp a lot sharper than i might expect and throwing this into a curve at speed doesn't give you necessarily the white knuckle moments that some off-road tuned vehicles can do now at speed on the highway this is actually pretty quiet 57.5 decibels was our 70 mile an hour reading on our highway test and that's quite a bit quieter than i expected and i believe a lot of that goes to the fact that this does have the carpeted headliner in it which knocks down a lot of the noise the wind noise that normally you would get with this hard top and all of the seams in it at least that's what i noticed on the last one that i had tested so around town over speed humps speed bumps things like that you don't even notice them obviously after where we just were nothing right so um yeah this chassis is extremely well done this is a solid body structure partially by way of the fact that this does have additional bracing here in the upper body structure that helps make this feel a little bit more solid really the only complaint i have is that this hard top still does have a lot of squeaking and creaking but that's really not so much about the chassis ride and handling as it is uh, some of the quality that we can talk about this chassis gets five out of five stars now it's time to talk about what's under the hood because that's what you can hear when you really put your foot in it Woo! nice three liter twin turbocharged ecoboost engine let me slow down here a little bit so i don't get a ticket 418 horsepower 440 pound feet of torque that's a lot of power out of just a three liter engine especially in one that's hauling around such a big heavy vehicle like this 5700 pounds this thing weighs that's a lot that's a lot and it's about as aerodynamic as well a brick because it is one but in spite of that, this has plenty of power for passing and getting around. It seems to be well-mannered for off-roading, meaning that it's got the low speed torque that you want, and it's got enough high speed power that this isn't going to be feeling like it's gutless anywhere you take it. Its tow rating is 4,500 pounds, which is pretty good for an off-road vehicle like this. Um, the one area that this powertrain does sort of let me down a little bit is around town i do find that it idles a little bit rough especially with the air conditioner on um, it when you're sitting at a stoplight it really just idles really rough now you don't always get that experience because it has an auto start stop system which isn't my favorite type of thing to have in any vehicle um, yeah it's um, you know annoying but there it is most vehicles are getting it now and so refinement is an issue for me in this vehicle thirst it is rated at 15 city 16 highway and 15 mpg combined my actual mileage this week was about 14. not as bad as you'd think for a vehicle like this but gee for that kind of mileage why don't we just put a 5 liter v8 in it and be done with it is kind of where i'm at on that but i know that's not the way of the world today overall this powertrain i do find pretty impressive in terms of its ability to provide enough power for this thing to not feel gutless and to be very maneuverable off-road as well as give you what you need on the highway this powertrain gets four out of five stars now you've seen where we've been you've seen what we've been doing so you're gonna have to forgive me a little bit that this interior looks a little bit lived in i came straight from the off-road park to my special studio area here where i do my interior so the lighting is good and what you're looking at here is a very well done interior in my opinion when you step up to the rafter and the trim grade that we've got here there are a lot of nice soft trims on the dash this one has the carbon fiber pack in it and so there's carbon fiber accents on the grab handles getting in and out down on the grab handle here on the center console the shift lever the steering wheel and it all looks very good it's kind of a nice satin finish carbon fiber at that not the shiny stuff we're used to as we look around the interior it's classic 
new age Bronco, the big screen in the center, the big digital instrument cluster ahead of me and the steering wheel this is really almost worth getting the rafter all by itself it's got the red mark so you can see where your center is when things get chaotic it's got magnesium paddle shifters on it for the 10-speed automatic transmission and all of the controls for not only your infotainment and your instrument cluster but the drive mode the exhaust the shocks all of it right there at your fingertips i love this steering wheel it's nice and thick it's got a good feel to it when you're driving around. These seats are some very nice sport seats with Raptor logos. These are leather with suede trim in the center. A lot of nice support from side to side. They're very comfortable and they do have heating elements, but they are not ventilated. But sitting in them all day, as you saw me doing out there in the, uh, the Gobi, so to speak, it's been very comfortable. Not once have I said, oh God, I can't wait to get done with this and get out of these chairs. Didn't happen. So um, very well done there. Now on the Bronco, there's a lot of good stuff in here, but the Raptor, uh, there's even more. And I love the fact that they've got the switch bank up here with all of the controls for the various locking toys. And there's some switches up on the upper console for a variety of different accessories, prefused switches that have leads that you can pick up on here and there around the vehicle to add things like lights and whatnot center console very simple very easy to use if you have gloves on or if you're dirty if you have you know you've been out doing stuff in the desert down in the bottom a center console cubby and here it's perfect for my phone i've been having to sit down there and off-road all day long up down sideways and that phone isn't going anywhere i love that i wish all cars had that gear shift lever here in the center off to the side cup holders and the four-wheel drive transfer case controller and the controller for the drive modes right here you twist it back and forth to set your drive mode and with it some of the various locking toys will activate automatically when you set it on certain drive modes like the locking rear differential it went in automatically when i put it in off-road mode as an example center console storage right back here a little bit larger than a square kleenex box down inside there and so a nice place to put a lot of stuff that you might be carrying on your trip and then the switches for the power windows and your power mirrors are on the center console and that's simply because these doors come off as most people know and well if you took them off with switches you wouldn't be able to control anything so that's why they're in the center this of course has the carpeted headliner that I referenced earlier and these are removable panels this entire roof is removable along with the doors the rear seat of the Bronco is a place that like last time I sat in it when we reviewed our first Bronco last year <sighs> even though this is a pretty good sized vehicle I feel like I'm in a compact car back here the seating position is not the most comfortable um, and it just doesn't feel like there's a lot of space. These seats are set for my height about 5'8", five, 5'9", five, with my boots on. And I've got enough leg room here. And I don't, I don't know, it, it just feels like I'm a little bit cramped in the back here. Part of it is the fact that the seat has a very small lower cushion. It doesn't stick out very far, partially to make it look a little bit bigger. But the seating position is a little bit on the low side. My knees are perched up and I'm kind of just sitting in an unnatural position and it's flat as a bench. Now, some people would say, quit complaining, Sam, you're in the back of an off-road vehicle. This isn't, you know, a sedan that you're supposed to be going on a long trip on. But the fact of the matter is this is a vehicle that you would be taking people on a long trip on, particularly off-road. If you're going out in the middle of nowhere all day long, I wouldn't want to sit back here all day, unlike the front seats. Now, there are some amenities back here as far as some level of comfort there is an armrest here with two cup holders but that's about it there are no ac vents back here so if the going gets hot so are your rear seat passengers there are some plug ports back here there are usb ports down here at the bottom two different kinds there is an ac outlet as well and the power window buttons there on the back but no ac vents in fact i'm sitting back here right now and i'm sweating Behind these rear seats is a pretty nice big cargo hold, as you can see. This has got a nice big rubber liner along with the rest of the vehicle. And as you might expect, these seats do fold down for a full cargo area if you need more space. This is an interior that on the last Bronco review that I did, I gave four out of five stars. And I'm going to continue to give this four out of five stars. And that's because there are a few things here worth pointing out quality now yes we're in a very nicely trimmed version fit and finish is very good but there are still a lot of hard plastics here and there 
for this price tag. But more than that, even this top makes a lot of squeaks, rattles, and creaks all the time, just driving down the street, let alone out in the off-road world. They haven't quite gotten this to a point where it doesn't sound like you're inside of a cheap camp trailer when you're driving around. So that's something I think they need to work on. And at this price, there are a few things missing still. So when it comes to features like the vents in the back seat and so forth, I think that when you get into this price stratus, um, you know, you have to be at a certain level when it comes to features. So this interior gets four out of five stars. The infotainment system here is the big screen, Sync 4. It's got a lot of feature content. The graphics, very good. The menu layouts, very good. Now this does not have the full tilt B&O audio system, yet the sound is still pretty decent for not having the all the way up there sound system. It's very easy to use. It's got the 360 degree view camera, which very important when you have an off-road vehicle like this to be able to see what's going on around you when you're out maneuvering and things like that. I like what they've done here. It works well. And unlike some other sync systems I've played with lately, the touch and the graphics and the menus following what you tell it to do are very fast. Very well done. This gets five out of five stars. Now it's time to talk about value and how the hell do we do that on something that's really not necessary in your life, unless you happen to be a racer, right? Uh, this is an optional toy for most people. And so when I start looking at that and, you know, the fact is, is, you know, you don't shop toys on consumer reports. You don't put a spreadsheet together and figure out what features it has and which one the Toyota has and which one the Range Rover has and blah, 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 blah. No, th this is a vehicle you buy because it has all of the stuff that presses your buttons, the stuff that makes your testosterone flow. Okay. All I'm saying is this is a vehicle that you don't need. So is it a value or not? Who cares? But I do look at things like value. I look at quality. I look at warranty, safety, all of these things that I measure other vehicles with. And those factor in here. But the other thing that factors in here is I'm out here at this off-road park today and I see people driving these specialized off-road vehicles, you know, the sand rails, the buggies, um, all of these things that I happen to know cost as much as this thing does. In some instances, I saw a few of them today that people probably spent more than what this cost the $75,000 for their special off-road toy that they have to trailer here. So in that context, that, this makes sense. You can drive it to work. You could take the kids to school and you can go grocery shopping in it. You can put it in a parking garage for crying out loud. So uh, value is good here. I think it even $75,000. And granted, if you find one sitting on a dealership lot minding its own business, you're going to spend a lot more than that. It's not a good value then, but if you happen to get a chance to order one and pay close to MSRP, you're in like Flint. Value is five out of five stars. When you put that in with everything we've already talked about, we're at four and a half stars for the total review. And it goes on my buy it list. <laughs> yeah, so if I were spending 75, 80 grand on an off-road toy that I don't need, this is the one that I would probably choose. I mean, it's got all of the good stuff going on. It just really works. Need I say more? It just presses all my buttons. It got, it got my juice flowing. So there you go. Yeah. So if you like what we do, see us on social media down below. All of our channels are there. See our latest video right there. But I'd really, really, really like it if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel right there. And then you can stay informed of everything we do. Either way, stay tuned.